Hello and welcome to Saturday's edition of Cracking the Cryptic. And today we have a puzzle that many people have been recommending over the last few days. And I think it marks another debut on the channel, uh, this time for Panthera, um, who has come up with a way of combining the ever-popular pencil puzzle, the nonogram, with Sudoku. Um, so this should be good. It's called Too Early 2, uh, and it didn't defeat any of the testers. Um, so I'm hoping I have a slightly easier time of it than I did with yesterday's mammoth solve of Mikey's puzzle. And I'm actually going to start today's video by revisiting that puzzle because Mikey revealed some incredible, uh, well, just a beautiful idea for breaking into that puzzle. It would have made my solve a little bit quicker, um, but uh, I thought you might like to see that. So I'm going to start the logic there. Um, before we get to that, though, look at this. Karen tweeted this to us earlier on. Um, so Karen's been making uh, drawings of some of the uh, streamers and YouTubers who've helped through lockdown and this is the version of Mark and me and it's absolutely brilliant I mean Mark could look a little bit more wizened I think to make it look more realistic but I have to say I love these so thank you very much to Karen we really appreciate that sort of thing um, other than that, just uh, an appeal as always, do try and support the channel on Patreon if you enjoy our content. We do put lots of extra stuff over there and there is some wonderful, wonderful, well there are wonderful puzzles over there right now. Uh, it's two bucks a month um, uh, for those and three bucks a month also gets you all the solution videos for the extra, the extra puzzles that we publish. Um, now, Let's get to it. What do I want to show you first? Oh, yeah. Now I'll do Mikey's puzzle first, just to just to remind, just because that's fresh in the memory. So, you you might remember that I got to the point very early in the solve where I'd identified this square here was a six or an eight, and I it took me a while to figure out which was correct, and I had to do quite a lot of sort of thinking. Now, Mikey showed something really beautiful, so I want to try and show you how that works. And the first thing to realize is that there is a bit of set theory going on. So this is uh, to do with groups of cells. So actually, I'm gonna, I'll do some highlighting. Why don't we do it this way? We'll highlight some cells and then I can show you how the logic works. So let's highlight these rectangles. Now, why do these rectangles help with knowing whether this is a six or an eight? Well, this is this is complicated, but bear with me. So what we would know right at the start here is obviously the purple cells plus the blue cells must be four sets of the digits one to nine. That must be true because they're four complete rows of the Sudoku. But at the same time, the green cells plus the blue cells, well, they must equal five sets of the digits one to nine. So in other words, the purple plus the blue, need, it's one set of the digits one to nine less than the green plus the blue. So we can just remove blue from both sides of that equation. Let's remove blue and we get to this position. So we now know that the purple plus one set of the digits one to nine is equal to the green. And now this is something that's been known for a long time in Sudoku solving. I think the, the first time it appeared on the channel was in a video where I solved an Ard van der Vatering puzzle. Um, and many of you have, many of you cotton on to this really very fast when it appears in videos ever since. But how can we use that here? Well, what we could do is deduct this set of the digits one to nine and this set of the digits one to nine from both sides of the equation. So let's get rid of those. That's not changing anything. We're now in a position where the purples plus one set of the digits one to nine is still equal to the greens. But this is the really clever thing because Mikey has hidden this 45 cage here in plain sight. And that is one set of the digits one to nine. So if we remove this from the, the green squares, we now have equivalents. We now have that the purples are equal to the greens. You can see that there are seven cells of each. Now, we still have to do a bit of thinking, but the thinking is getting more, it's getting more pliable now. Let's have a think about maths in relation to this set of digits. Let's call this square X. Well, we know that the arrow must be equal to X. So that's X and that's X. So altogether, we could write the purple squares as three times X, with X being what that is in the circle. So 
we know that those squares are therefore divisible by 3 when we add them up. Now there is a trick to, to a black Kropke dot, because if you think about a black Kropke dot, let's say that this square was y, because we know that the ratio on a black Kropke dot is always 1 to 2, you can always represent this as y and 2y. In other words, 3y. So every black Kropke dot is also, if you sum the digits, you will also get something divisible by 3. So that's divisible by 3, and that's divisible by 3. Now in order to ensure that the entirety of the green squares is divisible by 3, therefore, those three squares have to be divisible by 3, which means this square, which is obviously an arrow, has got an arrow pointing to those three squares, cannot be 8, because 8, and here is a knowledge bomb from Cracking the Cryptic, is not divisible by 3. Isn't that beautiful? Anyway, that's the sort of thing that we love here, and I wanted to share it with you. Right, let's come back to Panthera's puzzle. I need you to read you the rules of this one as well. Um, so, here we go. Normal Sudoku rules apply. Additionally, shade some cells such that the clues outside the grid indicate the sums of the digits in contiguous blocks of shaded cells in the respective row or column. Blocks have to be separated by at least one unshaded cell. Now that sounds complicated, but in fact it's incredibly simple, I think. So there's uh, an example now. So, so it says, so a six clue in a row, in fact there's a, there is a six clue in a row, could mean a single six. So let's say that that square was a six. That could be a shaded cell. Therefore, let's use purple. And that could be, that, that would therefore have to be separated from anything else in this row by unshaded cells. So that would be one way that this six could exist. Now, a second way it could exist, of course, is that rather than having six confined to a single cell, we could make two cells add up to six. We could have a two and a four, for example, and they would be shaded, surrounded by unshaded cells. Or we could also have the most sort of, because six can be made in three digits with one, two, and three, you could have something like that. Let's do, let's, ah, wah, I'm going great. Getting X's in the grid. You could have something like that. So they could be shaded in, again, surrounded by unshaded. And then we'd have to make sure that the cells over here um, sum to four, which you could see actually if we use three, two, and one would have to be a solitary four because we couldn't use the one and three option um, because that wouldn't be available. That would have already gone in the row. So that is how this puzzle apparently works. Now there is one rinky dink. Now here's the rinky dink. There must be a three by three magic square completely in the shaded region of the correct solution. Now a magic square, uh, now many of you already know this, okay, but we always on Cracking the Cryptic try and cater for new viewers. So what is a magic square, a three by three magic square? Well, basically it, it contains no repeated digits. So wherever we put our three, let's say this was the three by three magic square. Obviously that cannot have any repeated digits. So maybe I should actually choose something different to make it a bit clearer. Let's use, let's use that. Let's imagine this was all shaded in the finished solution and this was the magic square. Um, now what we would know is that there would therefore be no repeated digits in this magic square. Each row of this magic square would have to add up to the same digit, same number. Each column would have to add up to the same number and each main diagonal would have to sum up to the same number. Now, if you've not watched Cracking the Cryptic before, that may be mystifying, but there are lots and lots of things we can say immediately about magic squares that are very important to know. For example, there has to be a five in the middle square of a magic square using the digits one to nine. Why do we know this? How can we logically prove that? Well, let's think about it. Um, ah, this involves the secret. I get to talk about the secret. Yes, let's talk about the secret before we get cracking. So the secret, of course, is that if you add up the digits 1 to 9, you get 45. So we know that this entire purple squ square sums to 45. And it contains three complete rows. So each of these rows, if they have the same total must add up to 45 divided by 3, which is 15. So, now how can we use that to work out the middle digit is a 5? Well, let's think about, let's think about those three squares. They clearly add up to 15. I'll make those a different color, actually. 
um, how do I want to make them a different color? Uh, maybe I do, maybe I don't. I'm now wondering about whether how to do this actually so that it's clear what I'm doing. I'm going to move this to be the magic square. Okay, this box is now the magic square. So now I'm going to say let's add those digits. We know that's 15. Let's add those digits. We know that's another 15. Let's add those digits, the main diagonal. That's another 15. And let's add those digits, the other diagonal. That's another 15. Now, did I say the word Alexa? I did not. Alexa, you, you are not appearing in an episode of Cracking the Cryptic. Be quiet. Um, so we, we just added up those cells, those cells, these three cells, and these three cells. So you can see that we added four rows, columns, diagonals of 15 each. So four lots of 15 is 60. So all of those cells I just added up to add up to 60. But you'll know that I, if you look carefully, I only added these eight cells around the perimeter once each. I added the central cell four times when I did that because it's in that sum, it's in that sum, it's in that sum, and it's in that sum. So we know that one lot of each of these digits adds up to 45. If we add the whole box, just adding each cell once, we get 45. So adding this cell an extra three times has got us to 60. 60 minus 45 is 15. So the extra three times I've added this cell in must be equal to 15 divided by three, which is five. And that's how you know that the central digit of a magic square is a five. Now you can go further than this. I might as well do it actually because we're almost almost there. Now you now you know if you're trying to get 15 in each row, column, and diagonal, then each opposite pair are adding up to 10. Now where does the nine go? Could you ever put nine in the corner of this magic square? No, you can't. Why can't you put nine in the corner? Well, how are you going to make those two dominoes there add up to six because you're going to have to because this column needs to add to six this row needs to add to six you you could put two four in one one of them but the other one is now in broken because you can't put one five in the fives in the middle and you can't put two four in and that's the only ways of making six in two digits so you can never put nine in the corner nobody puts nine in the corner therefore nine has to go in one of these cells Let's put nine there. So now we know nine must be surrounded by two and four. And then from here, the whole thing sort of just collapses. Let's pick which way round the two and the four go. And you can see that we just we just have to do maths now to add up the rest of it and make sure that it works. And that if that's a six, that is one possible magic square. Now, obviously, we don't know what the actual magic square will be because it depended on where we put place the nine and which order we put the two and the four in. But it always basically will look something like this, a rotation or a reflection of that set of digits. That is all I've got to tell you. I've spent 13 minutes on the introduction. That's that's a long time, but I wanted to share Mikey's logic with you. And I wanted to make sure we were all on equal footing when it comes to magic squares. Now, do have a go at the puzzle. The way to play is to click the link under the video. Now I get to play. Let's get cracking and see how we go. Um, so the first thing I'm seeing here is the 42 clue. So 42 must be seven cells, mustn't it? Um, because I can't make uh, the maximum I could make six cells add up to, which would be nine plus eight plus seven plus six plus five plus four is 39. So this must be a seven cell string at least. It could be eight cells as well because the whole column obviously sums to 45. So if I missed just a three out, I could have an eight cell string, but I must have a seven cell string. So whether I start here or here, I would always be occupying those cells in the middle. There's no way of drawing in a seven cell string without occupying these squares. So these are all shaded. Um, now is that in a 37 here? So that must be at least six cells. So well, again, whether it starts here or here, these three in the center are always shaded. 
Um, now what do we do? We any very large totals? That's reasonably large. That's right. Okay. In fact, this is forced. I think because five plus six plus thirty-one is forty-two. So we have forty-two in this row in shaded cells. But we know between the 5 and the 31, there must be an unshaded cell. And we know between the 31 and the 6, there must be an unshaded cell, or, or perhaps more than one. But if we know the shaded cells are adding to 42 and the whole row adds to 45, how many unshaded cells can we have? We can't have more than two because we, we know that the, the number of unshaded cells must be summing to three. So in fact, there must be exactly two unshaded cells and that means we actually know exactly how this this breaks up because we know the unshaded cells must be a one and a two therefore is it possible that this five is a two cell sum no because a five would always require a one or a two if it's a two cell sum so the five must just be there as a shaded cell and that must be next to i'll use green for unshaded and must be next to a one or a two and now yeah and the logic's actually it's very clever isn't it so the six is the same six always needs a one or a two if it's two cells and it needs definitely needs a one and a two if it's three cells so this six must be a solitary clue as well and that means we can do that and that and we know the rest of the row is therefore shaded and this square is a one or a two seven clue here means we can unshade or green most of this column because this six is going to have to have a one on one side of it don't know which one of those is the one and then the rest of the column will have to be green which is going to impact our 37 clue so this is ping-ponging around because we know the 37 is six cells at least so now this square has got to join in um, not sure if that's going to matter. Mm, no, mm, not sure. This column, oh, this column is a bit like the final column. This seven clue is going to require the five to take a two on one side of it. So you can see where if the two goes here, you're going to resolve all sorts of things. I'm not sure. But anyway, we, we can green in most of this column. Now, what can we do? A 17, 12 across the top. 17 can be as few as two cells, though. So that's, this is completely useless. Um, hang on a second. Let me just stare. Uh, Five. Five, 19 5 might be interesting because I can't put a solitary 5 in the first three squares there so if that's a f ah that's interesting right this is interesting because let's just hypothesize that this 5 is a single cell 5 is that possible the answer is no because I couldn't put it in those three squares due to Sudoku. And if I put it here, which is the first valid square it could go into, I can't fit the 19 and the 5 in because you'd have to put 5 here, then a gap, then 19, which must be at least three cells because 9 plus 8 only adds to 17, then a gap, and this 5 would live off the end of the grid, which is no good. So... We now know, I think, that this must be a two-cell clue. And how about this? And we know that that two-cell clue can never take this square. Because if it takes this square, we have exactly the same problem we ran into if this was a solitary five, i.e. this five pokes off the end of the grid again. Don't let things poke off the end of your grids. So, so if this is a if this is a two cell sum to five and it's in this box that square is always purple now look at this now the 12 clue must be two cells and therefore that's turned purple 17 clue means that square's turned purple 
Now the eight clue. Ah, and that's. Hang on a second. So the eight clue. I'm wondering about this square. Is it possible that this square is purple? If that's purple. I don't think it is, is it? Because if this is purple, I now know that this eight string has to have a one in it. Three cells adding up to eight must include a one, which makes this a two. So this is a one, three, four string. So we're now in these four squares, we've used the digits one, two, three, and four. But in order to make five in two cells, I need one of those digits in this square and it's not available. So that's lovely. That square is therefore green. This square has turned purple. Therefore, it's the two. This is all going to collapse now. That's a three. Therefore, this is a one. This is a two. This 12 clue is done. That's a nine. This is an eight because it's a solitary clue. So it must be eight. Now our 17 is done. We can do that one in green. This is a seven style string at least. So that puts an extra purple in this column. I do like nonograms. I don't know if it's a sin for me to say that. I mean, I know some people think they're very trivial puzzles, but this is this is just it's just a lot of fun. Um, and it's not it's not simple, but it's very enjoyable. Um, now, 12 here, that's two, that could be as few as two cells. We don't actually know where that goes. So what do we do now? Have I have I just have I just said, oh yeah, the nonograms are really easy and now I'm gonna get very stuck. Um don't get stuck, Simon. What can you do here? You can. I don't like the look of this row anymore. I quite like the look of this row. I mean if that's a one, that would plonk a four here. Um 19 or maybe I can think about oh no I know how I can think about this yes I do know how I can think about this this clue is the important one isn't it because that cannot be this cell has to be purple this is what this is what we have to figure out because can you make this square a solitary five well, clearly not, because the seven clue then breaks. So this square, if it's purple, cannot take a big digit. It would have to be a one. Now, that means this square would have to be purple. Now, that means if we know that whether or not this is purple, this is always in would be in and we know the 19 is at least a three cell sum so we know that we yeah I mean I think what I'm coming down to is this in fact this can't be a solitary five either I've just noticed that because if it was a solitary five that would be a six and that would break it would fulfill the 11 clue but give us two sixes in this in this box so as the 19 goes at least to this square if the 19 took that square, it's broken. So the 19 doesn't take this square. So the 19 must be trapped into those squares. That must be green. We know that this cannot be... In fact, we now know that this can't be a single 5 because it, it can't put single 5 in either of those two squares. So this is a double clue and therefore it must be 1 and 4. I think I could have done that more efficiently, but if I got there in the end, now that square must be purple. Um, do we know do we know anything more about this top row now we know that square square oh yeah we do of course we do because we know that the 12 clue requires this to be purple and now this 5 clue tells us the value of this digit once this is 5 our 12 clue is done so that turns green that turns green this is a 21 clue starting here so that must be at least three squares this seven clue is done and we're actually doing okay here 
Um, got an eight clue. Ah, a twenty-two clue starting here must be at least three squares, so that must come into play. Now, can that? Right, this square is now interesting because this square, if this is purple, you can't fit the 15 or the 17 on the left or the right of this string of purples. So that cannot be purple, that's green. Now this is part of the 15 and must be at least two cells, so that turns purple. 21 coming down can't be two cells, so it must be now must be four cells and possibly five. Um, is that required to be green? Maybe not actually. If that was purple, look, you could fit 17 into a purple domino at the bottom of the column. So perhaps we don't know about this square yet. Um, right, okay. So now let's think about what else we can do. Might be able to do maths on this row because we can get the sum of those two squares. We know those two squares have got to add up to the difference between 45 for the row and the shaded squares, which add up to 29. So these add up, yeah, hang on, these add up to 16. So they are a 7 9 pair. There's a 7 here. There we go. So we've got a 7 in this square, a 9 in this square. Those two squares have got to be 4 and 6, which is done. There's a 6 here. So that's 6 and 4. Those two squares are three and eight, which is also done. Eight and three. These squares have got to be a one, two, four, triple. Ah, now and that one can't be four because we know that the green cells in this column are only adding up to three. So this is a one or a two. And the eight clue now can't be one seven or two six so this must be three five so this is a three this is a five i think and those two squares now have got to be six and eight i don't know if we can disambiguate that those two these two have got to be seven and nine to complete the row and suddenly we're doing not too badly okay so is this has that affected this this column? I think my eyes keep getting dragged here and I still don't think I can do it. 23 here. Ah, that's annoying. 23 could be done in as few as three cells. So you can just see we could fit it here or here. So we can't actually purple anything. 12, 15, 15 could be two cells, 8, 21, 6. So now maybe we can do something with that. Oh, better than that, actually. Hang on, hang on. There is a, oh, I'm so silly sometimes. There is a, a really important difference between the numbers 1 and 2 and the number 3. So this column, which now has a one or a two in a green cell here, needs something else to get its green cells adding up to three. So that square's green. Good grief, Simon. Um, uh, so I looked at the bottom row there, but I'm not sure that's going to be important because the problem is six and four can be done in solitary cells. Although it is quite interesting. Look, you've got a six here and a four here. So that would fit nicely with six and four going into those two cells. Oh, is this going to draw a picture? Sorry, I hadn't even thought about that. But look, there's I'm just noticing now it's looking awfully symmetrical. And if that was a six and that was a four, it would continue to look sort of like like we're creating a mouse or something. Uh, okay, I don't think I can do the puzzle by reference to the picture it might create. So ignore that, Simon, and get on with solving the puzzle. 37 is at least a six cell sum. So that square's now become purple. That's a 21 sum. 
So these squares are adding up to 13. Well, or you could add that one in as well. You can make 13 in four cells. Bobbins. Um, ah, ah, I can prove that that isn't a two cell sum. Because if that's a two cell sum adding to six, it would have to be those two squares. That does not work because it would have to be one five. And what are you going to put in that square? That won't work at all because these two squares now have to sum to six and that's going to require another cell in this box that is a one or a five. So that is wrong. So that means this must be a, well, it doesn't mean, no, it doesn't mean that one is. It means one of these two is a solitary six. Oh, it's still probably this one. But no, it could be that one. If this one is the solitary six, um, you can still fit. You can only just do it. You can only just do it. If this, if these are both green, you can't put the four in this column. Oh, but you could put one, three. But well, it doesn't matter. The six would have to go there. And then either a solitary four here or a one three pair, either of which look possible. Although that, no, that's going to break that. So it would have to be a solitary four in this position. But then if the six is over here, the four can go. Well, I think it can go in any of those three cells. So this might not be what we're meant to do. I'm actually getting a bit concerned here because I can't see what I can do with those three clues. 15 and 8, 15, 17, oh, the 17 can't be an 8, 9 pair now because this square cannot be 8 or 9, so that square is turning purple, that, we know 23 is at least 3 squares, so those have turned purple all of a sudden, By symmetry, that square's got to be purple, but I'm not going to do that. Um, the eight could take another cell. Then, then you'd have to have a one in this string, but there doesn't look to be enough real estate at the top of the column to tell me that that's wrong or right. By symmetry, this square's got to be purple. Stop looking at symmetry. Come on. Um, I've not used the magic square either. Maybe I can do the magic square. Actually, that is not such a stupid thought, you know, because, well, I can see that I can't actually, this five is interesting. We know the center of a magic square is a five, so you can't put the center in those squares at all. Ah, now that is this 14. Is that why? So let's ask the question. Can we put the center of the magic square in this column? And I think the answer is no, you can't because of this 14 clue. Because we know that if we try, for example, let's try and put the five here. And we're saying this is the magic square. So this is a shaded se sequence. But that means those three squares add up to 15 because they are part of the magic square. And that breaks the 14 clue. So you cannot put a five down here. Well, you could put a five, but you can't make it the magic square five. Now five can't go in this column. So I think, I think we can get rid. There is no center of the magic square anywhere on the right hand side of this grid. Oh, this is lovely. This is lovely. Now. Now the same logic applies down here. I can't put the five down here, not because of the left hand side of the magic square, but because of the right hand side of the magic square. If you put five here, these three squares have to be shaded and they have to add up to 15 and that breaks the 14 again. So you can't put the five here because those aren't shaded. So the five is in this column. The magic square center is in column three 
The magic squares. Oh, this is interesting. Um, that is interesting. I was about to say it's probably here. Because these three squares would then add up to 15 and make that clue correct. But actually, look, if you had it here, the same logic would apply. Those three squares would add up to 15 and it would work for that clue. Um, maybe it can even be as low... Oh, no, I tell you what it can't be. It can't be as low as here. Not because of the horizontal clues, but I th doesn't that break this column? Because if this is the centre of the magic square, all these squares are shaded. And now there isn't enough room. We've, we've created a massive sequence of shaded cells down column three. And there isn't enough room to put the six at the bottom once we put a gap in. So that's not... So the five is in one of those two positions. One of these two is the center of the magic square. I'm going to make those a different color. Um, now, what does that mean? Well, one thing it means, look, is that the seven... Hang on a minute. This is really, really, it's beautiful setting. It really is beautiful setting because now we know that the odd digits of the magic square are always in the orthogonally connected cells with the five. So if the five, wherever the five is, let's imagine it's here just for the sake of exposition. We know that the odd digits surround the five in one of those four cells. Well, where does the seven go then? The seven can't go in either of those two squares, so it has to be in one of those two squares. But the seven is opposite the three. So you can't put the seven here because that square's then got no option. So the seven has to be, I think, in one of those two squares, depending on which one of these is the five. And that means the three is in one of those two squares. Now that also means that now we know that the 1 and the 9 are in this, this direction. Sorry, let me just think about this now. So the 1 and the 9. The 1 and the 9 are in this direction. not sure how I can use that. Maybe I can use the 21 total. So if this is the 5, those are adding up to 15. 19, you'd need a 2 here. Oh, I see. So the 2, the two is in one of those two positions in the column. And is always shaded, isn't it? So does that shove the 6 downwards? I think it does. Because if... Yeah, it does. If this is the six now in the column, this square has to be unshaded. And it looks at first blush like you can include the magic square by putting the five here. But you can't because those three squares would add up to 15 and 15 and four is only 19. It's not enough to get us to 21. So actually this is telling us, we still don't know where the magic square is, but we do know that the six is at the bottom and therefore that square is green. This square is green, that square is green. Oh no. This 15 clue is being met by the magic square, but we still don't know whether it's those three or those three. Oh, we do know there's a 7 in it, though. So we know that the two squares either side of the 7 have to add up to 8 to make 15. And they're not 3, 5, and they're not 1, 7. So there's a 2 and a 6 in this column. And the 6 can't go here. This is getting complicated. The 6 can't go here. But the 2 could. So there's 2s and 6s on this side of the grid. And that must mean on this side of the grid, 
we've got to have two cells that sum up to 12 because we've got three we need so we can't have three nine we can't have five seven there's a four and an eight in those squares now look if there's a four and an eight in these squares to surround the three that square can't be an eight so that's a six that's an eight Now my 17 here can't be a two cell sum at the bottom. So this square can't be shaded, I think. That's broken my symmetry. That's probably a mistake. Ah, I don't know what I did wrong there though. If that's, I think that, what, that is an eight. That must be surrounded by four and eight in the magic square. So that forces this to be an eight. Now, if that's shaded, you've got to have a two cell 17 sum, which you can't have. Oh, okay, I'm a bit stuck. I think maybe the symmetry's broken here. So now these three squares have got to add up to 22, which is interesting. That can't be seven then because then you'd have to have another seven below it. So that square's nine, that square's seven. Still doesn't tell us anything about the magic square and its actual position. This square must be five to make this add up. These two squares are now adding up to 12 without using five, seven. So this is four, eight, which would have to be this way round. Sorry, not that way round. In fact, the exact opposite way round to that. Four, eight, or three, nine. Hmm. Okay, I don't think that's... Well, actually, a little, a little point here is now that this is a three or a four, we can't... Oh, no, that's nonsense. I was thinking this was green, but it's not. Oh dear, I'm stuck. Um, so how how do we position the magic square? How do we know whether it's this magic square or this magic square? It's not this clue. That's not doing it. That's not enough. I don't think this clue is enough. Unless I can use the two positioning. It must be horizontal clue. 37. Oh, maybe the outies here. Does that help us? If that's the center of the magic square, you've got a... S oh, good grief. Right. This is very clever indeed. Can this be the center of the magic square? The answer is no, because then we know that we've got to do this for our central run of 15. Now, what are we putting in those squares? We know that the green, this is shaded now, obviously, because it's part of the magic square. So those two squares have to add up to eight. Well, they're not one seven and they're not three five. So they have to be a two six pair and they can't be because of column one. So this is telling us that this is not the correct orientation, oopsie, of the, of the magic square, um, which means that the five cannot be here. The five has to move up. Our magic square is therefore this magic square. Those have to be purpled. This must be the seven. This must be the three. We know the three is surrounded by a four and an eight. So those are a four, eight pair. Um, we know the five is surrounded by uh, a one, nine pair. So we can put that in. And we know the seven is surrounded by a two six pair. So we can put that in. And now we're gonna have our 15 here. That's good. We're gonna have our 15 here. So this has turned green. We're going to, we've got our 15 here. So this turns green. That square's purple now because 21 must be three cells. This one still needs two more because those only add up to 19. So that's a two. That's also therefore purple. 21, we can't make those two squares add up to 19, so we need more purples. 20 must be at least three cells. All of those turn purple. 
We are creating Mickey Mouse, I think. Um, that square's purple. Uh, 14 without 3 and 5. Uh, so one, two, four. If it's a four cell sum, it would have to be one, two, four, seven, and it can't be. That would break that square. So that square's green. And okay. So we must be nearly done now. I think <laughs> maybe. Um, Yeah, hang on, the 8 clue here is nice now, isn't it? Because I've got the same consideration with this 8 clue that I have with this 37 clue and the outies. Those two squares have to add up to 8 without being 1, 7 or 3, 5. This is 2, 6, and we can do that. 2 and 6 go into the grid. 6 must live in one of those squares. 2 must live in one of those squares. So the outies here now have to be, they can't be 2, 6, because that's going to break that square and those squares. So this is either 3 and 5, which would have to be this way round, or it's 1 and 7, which would have to be this way. Oops, 1 and 7, that way round. Still, we're not quite home and hosed here, are we? So, sorry, I think I'm going to have to continue to think. What is it that we can do next that's going to help us on our merry way? It is. Don't know. <laughs> um, uh, do I know anything about this column? Do I know enough to be able to conclude about this square? If I knew that square was purple, that would have to be a 4. I'm very suspicious that this is a 4 because it's symmetrical with this one. But that requires this to be purple. Is there a need for this to be purple? I don't think so. These have to sum to 11. so. One has to be, ah, yes, yeah, Sudoku helps me. This one, look, means there's a one in one of those squares. That fixes the magic square, oh good. So now we're suddenly going to cook with gas, I think. That must be five to make those outies add to eight. Once we know that this is a nine, we know we must be surrounding it with two and four to add up to 15. Therefore, that square's become a six, this square's become an eight, that's become a nine. That square must be a 3 to make it add up. Those two squares now are 4, 8 pair, which is done because there's an 8 I've just spotted there. This must be 8, 8. That must be a 1, 8 pair. So that's 8, that's 1. That must be 7 and that must be 4. Now those two squares now are 1 and 9, which is also done. This square's got to be something. Um, I realise that's not terribly descriptive. It's a two, I think. So that's not one, that's not two. Uh, it's probably a way of resolving that. I don't know what it is. Um, now, what are those adding up to? They are adding up to 14. So, uh, that's definitely not equal to 21, is it? So it must take another square, which means that must be green. This is the four that I thought it was. That all turns green. This turns purple. This square, what do we have there? 14. We need seven more. So that's seven. That's six. Uh, this column needs one, three, and five. That's, do we know anything about the... Oh, we do. We've got 23 now, so all of that's green. Oh, we finished our picture. Oh, <laughs> okay, it's not Mickey Mouse, is it? It's an alarm clock. 
And, oh, is this saying it's three o'clock? Is it three o'clock in the morning? Too early. It's too early. Oh, that's really clever. Oh, that is really clever. I love that. That's, it should have been called too early three, not too early two. Um, oh, 3 a.m. is far too early. Some people think 3 p.m. is too early. Good grief. Um, that's very witty. Very witty indeed. Very, very clever as well. Um, so this square has become a three. That's not a three anymore. And I, I think, I don't want to speak too soon, but it sort of feels like we ought to be able to finish this off now without too much more difficulty. This square has got to be a one or a two to complete this column. Um, these squares are adding up to 14. Do they need to have a one in? I think they do because otherwise I don't think it's going to add up to the right number because we can't use two or three. So if there's no one here, four, five and six adds to 15. So there must be a one in one of those two squares, which must be in one of these two squares. And you can see all of a sudden that looks quite useful. This two is placing a two there in the corner. These, the other two squares have got to add up to 13 and they're not five, eight or four, nine. So this is one, six and seven. Uh, I presume I can do if I think about it hard enough, but I'm not immediately seeing how to do it. So we'll come, we'll do it slowly. Seven, six come out, one comes out of there. Bobbins. Um, Okay, what do we need over here? We need eights and nines, which we can do. These three, uh, we can, we're going to be able to hone in on the value of this using maths. They add up to 39. So the outies in this column add up to six, which means that's a three. This needs one, five and seven. You can see this square can only be a five. One, five, three. 7 goes in here. Um, so those squares have got to be a 4-8 pair, which is done. We need a 4 somewhere in the central row. That must go there. This column needs a 9 and something. What is it? Why is my scanning not working today? 5 and 9 go in that order. That's going to fix the 9, fix the 1, gives us a 7. 6 gives us a 1 here. This square is going to be something I think it's a seven that square should be a six that looks like it's correct let's click check doesn't look right oh okay it's because of how it's in the software so ignore that the software is trying to work out whether this entire grid obeys the rules of Sudoku it doesn't understand so we can how can I actually check this I think I'm gonna to have to check it when I edit the puzzle I hope it's correct it felt very logical um, and I did try and do it logically. It's a beautiful puzzle. It really is. It's incredibly clever. And the fact that the magic square was important for the placing of the sort of nonogram elements is gorgeous. It really is. And I love the wit as well that it comes up with an alarm clock and it's far too early. So Panthera, thank you very much. Um, that was an absolute pleasure. And thanks so much for watching. It's another quite long video, but I did quite a long introduction today, so I hope you'll forgive me. And we'll be back later, of course, with another edition of Cracking the Cryptic. Mm -hmm.